Hi friends, welcome to my channel, I'm Tammy K. It's a particularly cool morning. And so I've got my lovely thick sweater on, I just got it out of storage, cause tis the season. It's time to paint some birch trees. That's right, this is an 11 by 15 size, it is huge, but I thought it would be fun to paint big today. We're also using a credit card, yes, Costco card, one of ours, to create our birch trees. It's gonna be so fun. Get your paintbrushes, your paper, your paint, let's go. Alrighty friends, we have our meat and art products, paints, palette, water cups, brushes, this 11 by 15 paper as well, which is 100% cotton and our credit card, Costco card, whatever. So we're gonna dip into our cool water here. We're just gonna make a bunch of black and we're gonna see if this is runny enough to start making our trunks of our birch trees. All the links uh, for the supplies are linked below if you're interested in checking them out. So here we go, we just basically dip our card and we drag it to the right or to the left. We drag it inward. If we're wanting to make a tree, if we start on the left side of the tree, we drag it to the middle of where the tree trunk is. Does that make sense? And so your card is gonna pick up variations of color, some more saturated, others less saturated as you're seeing, and it's not an even line, and you're gonna get some really amazing texture. Now, doing the other side, dragging it in towards the center is a bit wonky and awkward, and you just have to experiment with it. So just get really flexible with your wrist and dragging it in towards the center. I promise every time you do this, it's going to be different because the card picks up different amounts of paint each time. And throughout this project, I have to admit, I had to get more paint on my palette many different times because I kept running out. You do use quite a lot of paint. You can see on this first tree there that I've got some really dark spots, some splotches there which add to that texture of the bark of the birch tree. So this one is just leaning over to the side. And for this one, I was having a bit of a issue because when I was angling my card, as awkward as it can be to hold a card like this and paint like this, so to speak, I started to make it a bit wider at the top, just kind of angling it instead of angling it in so that the tree branch would start to get thinner and skinnier towards the top, if that makes sense. And then over here, of course, I started to do that same thing. That branch was getting wider, which it should be getting thinner. And so I just made it into two little branches stemming off there and just kind of went with it. So I've got a few more here on my composition. You're doing the same movements over and over to create your tree trunks. Just a little tip here, if you wanna be a little bit less awkward with painting this and feel like you have a bit more control over your credit card, just flip it on its side so it's vertical and you're gonna have a smaller space to work with. Sure, it'll take you longer to cover the same amount of space, but it's worth it. I think I, forgot that that's how I usually paint with a credit card anyway. So we're adding in some more skinny branches and just angling our card out, just at a diagonal just slightly and then coming in with that second side. And after this, we're going to use a skinny brush and do a few more details before we start with the foliage and the ground. So another one we'll do on the side and we have our paper taped down just for a really nice border. Ooh, that got away from me and that's okay but uh, we will have a nice border when we take off that paint and it's gonna look quite nice. So I'm taking my, what I'd call a number six round brush and I'm just going to go around to the places where I feel like we've missed some paint and there should be some paint closing in some sections. You can go ahead and take some really dark black paint if you want and grab your credit card again if you feel like you need to go over some areas, but I do like that splotchy look I like that this exercise is loose in nature and that you cannot control what the birch bark is going to look like because you never know what kind of paint consistency you're gonna pick up. Are you gonna pick up a bunch? And some of these places you can see a lot of black splotches and other places not so much. So right now with our brush, just filling in those spaces where maybe there was too much white space 
and it kind of looked unfinished. Just take a look and you know go over it with your eyes. And when you feel good about it, you're going to go ahead and take now some really thin marks or make some really thin marks, these branches. So birch trees have these crazy branches that are really thin and spindly that just kind of pop out of nowhere, it seems. So take a look at a reference photo sometime and you'll see they just squiggle and squaggle and they're really pointy and thin. And so just find some places in your composition where this makes sense to put those in. And it's going to not just have, these are not just gonna be trunks, but they will have all these lovely branches. I'm going really dark with them as well. And so this is something that you can add now to add the next details. As we're finishing painting these, I want to remind you of the concept of expectations. What are the expectations you have for this piece today? Do you want it to look exactly like mine? Do you want it to be different? Do you want to feel confident at the end of it? I want to remind you to keep your expectations literally, realistically simple. It's going to help you enjoy the process and get less stressed out on all the things that we are painting and doing today. All right, so I'm rinsing my brush really good because there was some black paint on there. We're going to start with the colorful. As you can see, my palette is already full of oranges, reds, pinks, purpley pink. And so we have a lot to work with here. But we're just going to start stippling in. And as I'm speeding through this, I'm going to show you different places where I'm adding different colors. But just use some really light watery paint and start to kind of stipple and just make really pretty marks on your paper. It's a really watery paint, so we're not going to have really dark colors here. This is the first layer and we're just kind of gently putting on that color. We'll come back later and darken some things up. So I'm using variations of color here to make it interesting and I'm also maintaining some white space so we don't just have one blob of color or several blobs of color because when you're looking at trees you're going to see some light shining through and that's what we're trying to emulate here. Keeping that white space helps it look like there is light shining through those branches and those trees. So I'm working quickly here. I'm not thinking too hard about it. Again, it's that first layer and look at how beautiful it's starting to come together. And some of that paint is still wet, but I'm adding in different colors on top of it just to get the beautiful blends and spreads of that color while it's still wet. So remind yourself to take a breath at this point. If you're feeling frustrated at all, we're gonna grab some really nice watery green and if it's too dark for you, just grab some water and start to spread that out. So we're gonna have the colorful foliage at the top and then we're gonna have some green. Maybe there's some other trees or grasses in the background. And on the ground, we're gonna have some more colors because all those leaves are going somewhere. These trees are going to be buried in color because the leaves are just starting to pile up and create a gorgeous fall scene. So at this point, if you are enjoying this video, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment. Let me know what your favorite part is or if you have an idea of something you'd like me to paint in the future on this channel. Right now I'm just painting some water. A little bit of uh, black is getting out of hand. Just pick it up with your damp, clean brush and move on. So we're gonna do a wet on wet technique here for the floor instead of just adding wet paint to dry paper. So now that everything is wet on the ground, this paint is gonna spread and just bleed and move and it's gonna be a lot lighter because it's gonna have more of that water content. I'm just adding in uh, little bits of color here and there. You can add some to the tree branches as well just to darken up the colors that you've placed down. And I'm trying to vary once again the different colors that we have here. I've got yellow, red, orange, and this is that first layer of color. Now I am working really fast. You don't have to work fast, but when things are wet, it is good to work quickly because then things dry pretty fast and it just, it's a lot more challenging because you have to re-wet the paper and it can mess with the paint that's already on there. So right now it looks like a bunch of a mess, but we're gonna keep adding in layers until we get the look, the final product that we want. So as you're doing this, I want you to think of what's one thing that you like about your composition right now. Everything is dry, I've allowed it to dry, and now I'm going in with that second layer of paint, really dark and saturated, and just making these little mounds, kind of like mounds of fall leaves. Lots of color, and if you feel like some of the color is too intense, just clean off your brush in the water 
dab it on a paper towel, and then you can spread that cleanish water along the edges and spread out that color as well. So let's go ahead and put in some oranges or some yellow ochre, whatever you see fit, and just start to build up these little leaf piles, so to speak. So take a deep breath, look for something that you like about your composition so far, and remind yourself of why you're doing this. I want you to get rid of this idea of perfectionism, of your expectations being too high, because our expectations often want us to do things perfectly, which set us up for disaster and then make us feel really bad and discourage us from trying again in the future. So remind yourself it's about the process and enjoying that. If we are always looking for and striving for this perfect moment where everything will come together and we love all the things we create, it's just not reality. I create many paintings that, as Jenna Rainey would say, I put them in the trash or I paint them for the trash or I paint an ugly painting, reminding myself it's okay to set myself up for whatever comes out of this experience is fine. So now we're going to create some more intensity in our leaves as well, in the tree branches, adding in, stippling in, putting in more of that intense color. Now, if you feel like you're always striving to create perfect art, I have a free ebook for you. It's linked in the description and it's literally called How to Let Go of Perfectionism in Art. I really believe that it can help you by utilizing some of the strategies and the techniques that I present to you that you can start to let go of wanting to make everything be just so and just enjoy the process of creating art because that's the part that calms you down. It takes care of your mental health and it gives you a sense of well-being and happiness. And if you even give away your art, even better. It puts a smile on someone else's face as well as yours. So I'm just covering some of these branches that didn't have any leaves. And I thought it would be good to add a little bit more color in there. And this might be a good time to take a step back and look at your painting and analyze how is it coming together. So if you're happy with how it turned out, then it's time to take off that tape, which is always my favorite thing. Clean out your brush, of course, so it doesn't get all cakey and dried out. And then that tape peel is just so satisfying because you're gonna have a beautiful, clean border to work with. Remember, this is 11 by 15. It is a large sheet of paper, even though it may not look like that. And if you wanna pick up your own, it's linked in the description of the video. I have a little bit that I wanted to add here. Sometimes as you're taking off that tape, you realize there's a few little things I want to change. Thank you so much for painting with me today. And I wanna wish you happy painting and happy mental health. All right, my friends, we have now painted these gorgeous and large birch trees, just perfect for the fall weather and the fall season. I hope you enjoyed that we also talked a little bit about expectations, especially in relationships and in life, and now to make them more realistic so that we don't get so disappointed all the time. Happy painting, guys. Happy mental health. I'll see you soon on the next video.